All right, all right. What's good, people? Welcome to the latest episode of Terrible Tile Tuesday. I am your host, Sim Football Critic. And give me just a second, right, guys, right. just to make sure everything is running smoothly the way it's supposed to. I'll share the link out to a few special people, and then we shall get it cracking. But what's happening, everybody? Everybody doing good? Hope everybody's doing good. Hope everybody is doing good. Now, you guys are going to have to excuse me for a second, man. I forgot to cut on the phone queue. So I got to do that. <laughs> so you guys are going to hear this, hear it live and in, in, in real time here. Give me just a hot second. But like I said, you guys are going to hear this in real time. Uh, give me a quick second here, guys. Quick second, quick second. And we shall get it cracking, man. But how's everybody doing this evening? Everybody good, right? Hope everybody is well. And let me share out the link. And then, like I said, man, I, I will cut the phone queue on. I'm running behind here tonight, guys, so I apologize for that. But we're going to make it happen. Hey, man, it's a live show. It's a live show, so you guys are going to hear it happen in real time, man. I ain't got no shame in that. <laughs> But well, how's everybody, man? Everybody good, right? Hope you all are well. Give me two seconds here, man, and, and forgive me, man. Forgive me, guys, for, for being <laughs> forgetful. All righty. So let me do that real quick, man. Let me get the phone queue going. Like I said, guys, y'all are going to hear this in real time, so y'all are going to hear the, the blog talk messaging and all of that. My bad, man. I know I'm professional, right? Give me a second, man. Let, let's let's get it going. Give me a second. I'm going to try to make this as, as painless as possible. What I actually might do is I might mute the sound so you guys don't actually hear it. But I don't know. If y'all hear it, whatever, whatever. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. All right. So here it is, guys. It's about to happen. Give me a hot second. Y'all going to hear me dialing up. Give me a quick second, folks. Start your show now. All right, so I muted it right there, guys, so you wouldn't have to hear it so much. And I'm going to mute it again here in about, uh, let me see, it's counting down. So I'll mute it again when it gets to the countdown so you guys don't have to hear it. But how's everybody doing tonight, man? Hope you guys are well. Hope you guys are good. Hope you got stuff for me to talk about. Your sh All right, there we go. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. You guys didn't really hear it. So I'm glad that worked out the way it did. Let me take this off until I get the callers in. So let's do the reintroduction, man. Welcome to the latest episode of Terrible Town Tuesday. I am your host, Sim Football Critic. Hope you guys are doing well and hope you had a great week and I hope you are starting off your week well. And we're going to talk a little still a talk tonight, man. If you guys want to call in, you should see it right there on the screen. It's also down in the description, 619-924-0818. Guys, this is a slow period right now. So, you know, if you want to talk about something, help me out. Help out the show. Give me a topic to talk about, and I will be happy to address that. But if you look down in the description, man, those are the few things that I'm going to talk about tonight. You know, a few things. A few things I'm going to talk about tonight, and we'll get into it. Basically, man, I want to talk about the signing of Devin Bush. We definitely want to address that. The Steelers releasing Keon Adams and Devin Bush already calling plays. What we're hearing, I know it's it's early, but still a good sign. And then also the, the signing of Steelers, you know, the Steelers signed wide receiver Johnny um, Holton, you know, from uh, the Raiders. You guys may know him from the Raiders, number 16, and he was with Philly, apparently, and they released him. Not really sure why. I'm not sure if it was a, you know, a cap thing or, you know, now we don't need you type of thing after the draft, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll talk about those things and whatever else you guys want to talk about. Let me do the quick uh, shout outs real quick, man. I, I, again, I, I was a little off as I started this show, so I apologize for that. So I didn't do that in advance. Let's go ahead and do that now. Say what's up to a few of you guys. First in the building was Jay Will. What's up, Jay? Joe Massa, Obi-Wan, Jared Devil, more AGWS. 
Why Diggy, Milton Buckner. What's up, Milton? Haven't seen you in a while, I don't believe. Mariona Pampa, Brandon Cheney, my brother Tony, Dan J, Rabbits Z Blue, uh, Zwami Mont uh, Montanez, uh, Mo Swagger, Jay Waller, Night Wolf, Keystone, Still Boy Cards. I haven't seen Still Boy Cards in a while, I believe. How you been, man? And who else is in here? Of course, my good brother Kenyon is in the building. And let's see who else, man. Did I miss anybody? Anthony uh, Haraga. Hariaga, Jason Winningham, Nays is in the building, and Agala 99 and Lu Luis D as well. And we'll leave it right there. We'll come back to you guys later. But again, that's what we're going to talk about tonight, man. I hope you guys are willing to call and give me some topics. I see 330 is already in the queue. I believe that's Duran. I don't want to jump to conclusions. Might be another 330. So we'll take your call here in just a moment. But yeah, how's everybody doing, man? Um, hope you guys are well. So let's let's go ahead and get into it. You know what? Why, why am I wasting time? As you can see, I'm, I'm all over the place tonight. My bad, guys. Bear with me, man. We are doing this thing live. We're gonna take the phone call three three zero. We'll give you a few moments to shine. Area code three three zero live. What you got for us tonight? Man, what's up? How you been doing, Sam? Nothing much, man. What's going on with you? No, I must been paying attention to a lot of the signings and releasings. I, I don't know exactly what's going on. A run rumor that's been going around that they might be trading both uh, uh, Burns and Dupree. Hmm. Now, I don't know. Did you hear about that? I haven't actually heard about it myself, um, but, hey, you know, that's that's good information. So are they trying to do it as like a package, or are they just basically saying both guys are tradable? I think they're doing it. Both guys are tradable because, I mean, like everybody, you know, keep on uh, getting on him. But I've seen a great improvement from last year. I have went and rewatched his film more and more. He keeps getting close to the quarterback, but not there, you know, getting to the quarterback now yeah he's he's been for the past two seasons he did it last year and I, he's doing it this again going to a pass rushing camp <laughs> it's a make it or break it for him and even with Artie Burns he had they did not pick up his fifth year um option so if Bur and everybody's saying that if Burns don't you know show something in the mini camps and you know the offseason workouts Pittsburgh can uh cut him uh before the preseason start and they can save I think over seven seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars yeah because he can't be making too much on his last deal or his last year of his rookie contract yeah yeah so you know that's what I was Looking, looking at. It. I mean, it, everything that's you know coming out this birthday. Uh, I'm really looking for looking. I uh, can't remember what his name is. The one that everybody jo thought uh, when he came out was uh, James um, Harris. He's rocking his number. Oh, Ola, a Denier, yeah, a Danny yeah, or a Denier. I don't I know. Not... Yeah, I still don't know if I, it's it's either a Denier or a Danny. Because uh, I've heard both. But I yeah. don't know which one is the right one. <laughs> now, this cat, I mean, he got injured. But uh, preseason, actually, I found out he was in the running for, you know, the defensive MVP for training camp and all everything else. And like I said, with all that stuff coming about, you know, the trades and everything else, Who's out there that Pittsburgh can really go after that's in the free agency or stuff like that to replace these cats? That's everybody's calling calling for yeah. That, everybody's calling for Artie Burns' head and stuff like that. This cat is still young. He technically will be con is considered. Um, this will be what his third season in the league, but. You have to look at it. He came out a year early. 
So his rookie season was like his senior season in college. I don't know, man. Artie, if you look at Artie Burns and, you know, the problem with Artie Burns is Artie, it's all in his head, man. It's in his head. It, it, to me, it's a confidence thing. I think Artie obviously has the speed. I like, you know, I like his length. I like his size for the most part. And he has done some things for us. I mean, he did do some things, um, not last year, but a year before that, near the end of the season, that made me think, okay, when he's on his game, maybe. But he just hasn't turned the corner. And, you know, definitely appreciate your call, Deron. We're going to go ahead and grab the next one, area code 360, coming to you in just a second. Um, but Artie, just, he just hasn't turned that corner. And, again, I'm not saying that he's a wash. I'm not saying that he can't improve. But, I mean, you're going on your your fourth season in the league, and I get it. Yeah, he's young. We all know Ike Turner. Uh, Ike Turner is smacking him around. Ike Taylor also, um, you know, he struggled too early. But, you know, by the third, fourth season, dudes start hitting their stride, man. And, 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 the, and the thing is this, too. If you look at some of the other cornerbacks that say were drafted when Artie Burns was drafted, I'm not saying these dudes are superstars, but some of these guys are at least serviceable. You know what I mean? Like, these guys are look, – look at – now, this might not be the best example because this dude gets beat from time to time, but look at how well uh, – what's his name? Marcus Peters – developed soon even in his rookie year and then he he's continued to be that steady player and again sometimes he makes some mistakes he's a little grabby but he's still a more serviceable cornerback than the Artie Burns and I'm just saying if you look at the progression you know even William Jackson the third you know he's playing relatively well for the Bengals and to me Artie just he his time is about to be up his time is about to be up you know clearly Listen, you know, them grabbing Justin Lane where they did is more than just Joe Hayden getting older. It's more than just, okay, we did sign Steven Nelson. And it's more than just those two, you know, front runners. I think the Steelers are also looking ahead. Like, look, this could be it for Artie. Even listen, listen at how Tomlin is even talking about him now. You know, saying more things about, oh, it's disappointing. And you know what I'm saying? So... I don't know, man. He's going to have a chance, I guess, but we shall see. All right, we got quite a few calls in the queue, man, so let's go ahead and get these in and out. Appreciate each and every one of you guys for calling. Right now, Area 360, you are live. What you got for us tonight? Hey, Sim, it's Nightwolf. How are you, my man? Nightwolf, what's up, man? How you doing? Good, man. Hey, man, really quickly. You made me a promise a month ago. You said you might put a picture up of your dad, that great man who looks like Joe Green. <laughs> you haven't done it yet. Yeah. What is this? I got to get one. I, actually, I I'll, I'll find one and I will flash it in the stream so you guys can see it. I'll definitely do it. <laughs> I forgot about that. I was, only, I was only thinking of that because I watched a football life, Joe Green, again last night for like the 50th time. I said, man, I got to do a shout out to Sim on that. <laughs> but anyway. Really, really, really quickly, I know what Kenyon's going to say because I know how he loves throwing Elmer under the trains, but <laughs> Elmer. <laughs> I watched. Yeah. I watched. I watched the press conferences really, really closely, like multiple times. And it's not just what they say, it's, what, it's how they say it. Last year, when Culver came out and said, hey, we got Tom Matikavich because they didn't dress the inside linebacker position, I just wanted to throw my shoes at the TV. Oh. I was so mad. Yeah. I was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So that was denial right there. But if you or Kenyon or come some other guys, Butler came out really early in the press conference about the Bush draft and said, listen, and the Pittsburgh press like press these guys so much, but they can't press them too much because they know they'll get kicked out. It's, you know, it's, it's a tight room. You know, they can only say so much. And Butler's exact words were, Bud has, a few minute things to work on. <laughs> I know, yeah. don't, don't, I know, I know where Canyon stands. <laughs> I don't need to ask him. But that's like, okay, it's his third year now. I was just watching a really good podcast. Um, 
Steel City Underground, they're a good group of guys. Um, they don't break down tape like you guys do, but they said, listen, the Steelers just really like this guy, and for $9 million bucks, he's actually a good deal on the market for outside pass rushers. It is what it is. But my question is, what do you guys think those quote-unquote minute things are? Can you hang on? They think if he can get seven to nine decent sacks or at least some good pressures this year, that they'll actually keep him at a decent rate. But, again, pass rushers don't grow. They don't fall off the trees. You guys know that. I mean, yeah. look at the guys in the draft. It's no, it's no miracle. It's like inside linebackers. They just don't, you know, can't, Cam Sutton's a decent guy, but he's like a minor upgrade to Medicaid. So, you know, what's good? What, what do you and Kenyon – I didn't even mention Kenny's thing because I know he's going to say. He's going to say, say, throw him in a dumpster. But what are these minute things you think he needs to work on? And thanks, man. I appreciate your time. Oh, yeah, man. Thank you for the call. And um, Kenyon, you, you already know. If you want to call, you know, I, I'll see the number pop up and I'll get you right in. But I'm sure Kenyon will be in the comment section as well. I'll answer what I think and then I'll, I'll go to the next call. <sighs> see, wording is everything. And... I know sometimes coaches get caught up in, matter of fact, I'll, I'll give you guys a better example for you guys that know me for the, the gaming stuff. Quick, quick story. A lot of you guys know I'm an EA Sports game changer. I work closely with Madden, blah, blah, blah. Been doing so since 2012. Most of you guys who you know play Madden would know who Rex Dixon was. He was the creative director for gameplay. Uh, he's no longer there because of creative differences. Now my boy Clint Oldenburg is still there, you know, ex-NFL player, et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada. But a lot of times those guys get caught up in speaking corporate talk, right? When they're in interviews and, you know, when I've done interviews with them, they've got given some of the best interviews because I knew how to – that's not tooting my horn. I'm just saying I knew the relationship I had with Rex and or Clint. I knew how to ask the question to get them to talk. Right. But a lot of times when you read blogs or you, you see them in front of a, a big media, you know, Operation Sports or some of these guys from the GameSpot and IGN and these places, you know, these big time media places asking them questions. They got to give you the corporate talk. That's just how it works. Right. It might not be exactly how they feel, but they have to relay it that way. And I think the Steeler coaches do the same thing at times. They're not going to give us the nitty gritty. Sometimes they, you know, you peek into the behind the scenes, kind of, you read between the lines, you can kind of fish out what they're saying. But Tomlin and Colbert are pretty good with just keeping it right here. But then you get the guys like Butler and them that just say too much. And that wording, a few minute things. Nah, I can't. Listen, I'm not an NFL coach, right? But clearly what I see what's wrong with Bud Dupree is Bud doesn't really, doesn't have a counter move. He don't have it. He doesn't have great hand usage. That's just what I see. Now, if Butler thinks those are minute things, if these are things that they're seeing in practice, obviously he should know how to do it. He's going to a pass rush specialist the last two or three years. Just for some reason, it just doesn't work. He relies on his speed. He tries to get the speed on the outside. You very rarely see Bud Dupree, if any time, work back to the inside, set him up, rip inside, or a bull rush and spin to the inside, or just a spin, or any type of whip. You don't see it from Bud. And even a guy like um, Sutton Smith, you see a little bit of that even out of him. He's a little guy. You know, granted it was at the college level, but you even see him working the hands. You know what I mean? And he has a, a little bit of counter movement. Bud, not so much. So I don't know what that my new things are. But I will say this before I grab the next call. I, I'm, I'm right here with Bud Dupree. Um, even kill. I think what he, do, what he did bring to the table last year, if he can be the best that we've seen him be at Pittsburgh, that'll help us. Okay, if he could be what he... The, the, the peak Bud Dupree that we've seen, if he can consistently be that, it will help us. I don't know if his, if his ceiling can go higher than that, though, because he just hasn't shown it to us. He has all of the tools as far as physical tools to do it. He just, I don't know. But, you know, the Steelers backed themselves into a corner where they really didn't have any other option. Had to pay him his fifth-year option. And maybe, again, maybe they feel like they could get something out of him. <laughs> I don't know. But I don't think he's horrible, like some people would say. 
you know, I don't think he's horrible. He just hasn't panned out to be what we were expecting him to be, especially being a number one draft pick. So those are my two cents. But let me grab the callers, man. Sorry for keeping you guys waiting. Area code 973. You are live. What you got for us tonight? What's going on, Sam? How you doing? Good. How you doing, man? It's Jay Will, by the way. Oh, what's up, brother? What's going on? I had a um a question for you that I'm gonna give you my opinion on what I think. But um, the question is, what do you think as far as right now, your opinion? What do you think is the weakest position in our defense? Mmm. Mmm. Let's see. Cause I I know I don't want to go with the obvious. Cause let me let me see the weakest position right now, and this is post draft. Huh. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. It might be. I probably would have to say safety. Um. Only reason why I would say that, I mean, we could argue definitely. Middle linebacker could be. I mean, because we, we're adding Devin Bush, but the other guys, we don't know. Outside linebacker, we're pretty thin. We just talked about uh-huh. Bud Dupree and T.J. Watt probably, you know, not uh-huh. not even probably. He's the strongest link. But then I'm going to get into a little bit of that a little later when we talk about Ola and these guys. We don't really know what, who they are. Right. But, but uh-huh. safety, I think safety, looking at both spots, there's a few question marks. Sean Davis had a great, uh, I can't say great. He had a better season, his best season probably with the Steelers as a whole. Free safety. Uh-huh. At free safety. And then Terrell Edmonds, he was a rookie, but we don't know. Is he going to take that leap? At least at corner, we could say, all right, Joe Hayden is solid. He's not just as fast anymore, but he's solid right there. We're expecting Steven Nelson to give us something. So I, I wouldn't say it was the... The biggest spot, I would actually say safety, because both of those positions, both free and strong, still a little bit of a question mark. Uh-huh. I, 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 I asked that because I agree, Sim. That's what that's what that's why I was going with it. In my opinion, just, let's just say Vince Williams could stay on the field. He mm-hmm. he having one of his best years. And we got <clears throat> Devin Bush playing how he we we expect him to play, you know he you know as a rookie you know good as a rookie could play, right. making plays for us. Do you see us moving Mark Barron to safety? You know on certain plays, certain mm. stuff packages. Do you see us moving him to safety because Terrell Edmonds didn't take that extra step? Dangerfield, who knows what happened with him? You know, and Marcus Allen, we don't know what he going because he stayed yeah. healthy. <laughs> Do you see us moving him to safety on certain plays? certain down and distances because he do got speed and he a hitter possibly um only thing that, that scares me a little bit with the things that a lot of us would want to try is we when we look at our staff man it seems like they're kind of stubborn in certain things like for for example baron hasn't played safety since tampa bay so the right. Steelers, you know it seemed like they were just sticking the mold and be like no he's here to be a linebacker you know like I don't know. Like, I don't always feel like they utilize people and try people in different spots. You know, just like... and I've him playing both on certain downs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Him playing both on certain downs. Because we know he could play, you know, just switch it up. Turn it to an all-hybrid because we want to be versatile and all that. So why not get a little versatile with it? Yeah, it's possible, man. I mean, I could see... I could see a scenario where it's him and Bush... In the dime, right? You know what I mean. Uh-huh, and he uh-huh. playing more so of the like the the sub linebacker slash safety type of position. I could see it happening. I just don't yeah. know, man. I just hope. It may I not hope be our go to, but I could see us trying that out. To yeah, see how it works. Hopefully, Keith Butler. You know, you know, we got Austin too. He might, you know. That's what I'm saying. Do, you know, we might. We might change a little couple things. That's what I'm hoping for. And my last thing, because I don't want to stay on too long, you got the callers, was, um, yeah, um, Bud Dupree, yeah, he is where he is, man. The best we're going to get probably out of him <laughs> is his ceiling is what he had this um this past year. Now, if we could get that out of him, we good. I'll you know, take it. Saying, you know, 
Yeah. You did yeah, mixed in uh, 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 Sutton Smith, you know, with, 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 with a little inside, outside on certain plays. Our defense, you know what I mean? I see, you know, hopefully we take it. Step. But um, thanks, and um, I hope you um, enjoyed the um, the mother, your Mother's Day and all that with your family and everything, man. I thank you for um, doing this, bro. I, I love this show. You know that I'm always on here. Yeah, man. Listen, I definitely appreciate that, man. I love you guys as well, man. And, and yeah, man, I had a great time with the family um, on Mother's Day. I had a hectic weekend, man. I did, did drive to Virginia and go to my brother's uh, graduation for his master's. That was two hours away from. Well, my parents stay in Virginia. Then I had, I drove back the same day so I could spend the Mother's Day officially with my wife. And, you know, my mom understood that. So it was busy, but a great weekend. Um, but, yeah, man, um, you said the key word. I hope that Butler and Austin and even Bradley, let's throw them in that mix, and Tom, I hope they are willing to try out uh, multiple things because it, it looks like they went for production in the draft. Later rounds with the guys like Sutton, you know, not being the biggest guy, but he's a he was productive. He's an effort guy. Speed, obviously, you know, taking a chance on Ulysses Gilbert. Oh, you know, did y'all hear that? I didn't call him Grant. <laughs> I've been calling him Ulysses. That's Grant. <laughs> oh, Lord, I don't know why, man. But, yeah, I finally said his name right. With him, and, you know, obviously, Devin Bush, it sounds like we got guys that you could just try out. Grant, uh, there it is. I'm about to say Grant again. And I just said I didn't say it before that. I was, my, my head is crazy, man. And I, I swear this ain't nothing but water. I swear. <laughs> okay, Gilbert. Ulysses Gilbert. You see him lining up a lot on the outside. Well, inside. More so the slot guy he's playing. But he, he does it quite often in college. Go watch his film. This dude is lined up over receivers routinely. And does a fairly decent job. So we have some opportunities there, and even Barron. You know, let's see what Barron still has at safety or obviously at linebacker because they're going to have to find ways to get Devin Bush on the field. It's a first-round draft pick, and those days of us sitting on our hands and letting these guys develop, I won't say it's completely gone, but that hasn't been the case in the last five years or so. You know, Shazia obviously came in there and played. You know, T.J. Watt got in there early. So... Obviously, they're going to try to get Devin Bush on the field. Maybe you want to keep that veteran leadership and, you know, just the guy who knows the defense the most, Vince Williams on the field, and then you throw Barron out there too. So you're right. You could see a scenario like that, but I'm all for it, man. Just get the best out of these guys. Rolling on to the next call, man. Area code 313. You are live. What you got for us tonight? What's going on, Phil? This old school from uh, Detroit, Michigan. I'll be hollering at you a couple of times right before the draft, brother. Oh yeah, you man. Nation. How you doing, man? Yeah, what's I'm doing all going good, brother. Just turned fifty one Sunday on Mother's Day. I'm the most forgotten man in America because my birthday <laughs> is the twelfth of May. Of course oh. that second Sunday in May is always Mother's Day. Yeah. So of course everybody called me two and three days later saying, Hey man, I forgot I said don't you worry about it. Be good. Well happy good belated, man. Fifty one years. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, I appreciate it. But what I wanted to tap in is I hear the conversation was going on with everybody. And what I was looking at is like this. I'm going back and I'm looking at the time, I'm looking at Coward era and Thomas era. Mm -hmm. What our defense. And what what we missing and what we keep coming up short is he keeps trying out Athlete guys, I know Larry Foot's father. He's a bowler, mm. and you know we rap, we rap, we rap. Uh, he a senior. We bowl in the same league on Wednesday night, and he said this is what he sees and what Larry be talking when he talked to him because he's down there in Tampa with uh, Bruce Arians. He told me that he said they be trying to get linebackers with athleticism instead of get intense linebackers like Foot and them football players. That was. Uh, Coward regime was. When you look at the James Farriers and the different ones and put in the last one, they was real intense and they at the start of attack, they could hit anything and they didn't try to veer around, I'll quit you or whatever. They were legitimate football players. Yeah. Came out of them programs that you know flip field. Once again, I'm looking at it now, they're releasing players and all this stuff. You're trying to get Bud Dupree to do something that he's not normally doing a plays that way. This is what the problem is with him. 
that's why I be saying you don't see, like you said, in the counter move. Because James Harrison built himself because he had low center of gravity. He can bend and get low on you, especially mm-hmm. against a 6'6 tackle, and then bend that corner. My boy from Michigan, Woodley Hack, can do the same thing. This is what Bud and Free haven't developed. That's why they push him up the field. He do not have low center of gravity. So when I'm looking at the team and I'm watching the coaches and then I'm going back when the Coward era, I'm talking about we were loaded up right behind each other and them guys that missed a beat. We was not worried about if they going to play come Sunday. That defense just was interchangeable. You right. with the secondary. Mm-hmm. The top, the uh, Townsend and the different ones, when Rod was in them left, they stepped right in. You weren't worried about no guy three years down the road. And, yes, you did give a good analogy earlier. I loved it when you were trying to say about Peters, but I'm going to give you a better one. The boy in Cleveland, Ward. Ward been there how many years? Yeah. Two. Yeah. <laughs> and he's one of the upcoming best people in the back of the league. That's what you're saying. You should be turning a corner. We should still want if you can play. And then every summer you went up against the best of Steve Lilly and Antonio Brown. Yep. Your behind supposed to got better. Don't come tell me he should know he, he don't have the bill of good. I have yet to see a report out of camp that he gave Antonio Brown fits, but when you're good, you get in a fight. This is what happened. That's when you know, oh, we got one that don't back down. Antonio was fine. That, and this is what I know. So until we get back, so you got to get intense football players. I love athletes. But when it comes to stick your nose in there, when it's smash mouth, this was what we were built on. They got to get back to it defensively, not athletic, not speed. I love Bush because, you know, he's coming off his, his bloodline with his, you know, his uncle now. That's fine. And he's coming out of the Big Ten. I like that. Big Ten linebackers told him not to be good. We didn't get a draft out of there. But when we flutter down there and get somebody that's in touch, we flutter down there and get somebody it, 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 Florida State, we tried it. My man was pretty good. He got good later on. Was uh uh, uh what's his name? Timmons. Timmons, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I, right. It, but remember, it took a minute for Timmons to get there, and they moved him inside because he was an outside linebacker. But the Joey Porter, if you couldn't get good on the Joey Porter, being what Joey Porter was to the Pittsburgh Steelers, come on, you don't got it. You waste your time. Move on to the next guy. So hopefully, we find somebody and we can move on with this defense. But they got a bunch of athletes. That's all I'm saying. That's what I'm looking at the kid from North and Illinois. I'm looking at that kid. Now, I like the kid from Toledo. He looks good, but he got hurt. I, I hope that he does fit that, that, that regime. But it's all about stout, standing up for that attack, and be able to come off them blocks and share blocks and make those tackles. If you can't do that, this is when that kid from Jacksonville ran us over in Pittsburgh Ah, cause it reminded me of Pete Johnson back in the day. I was like, oh, my God. So, <laughs> yes, he's killing us. And they scared they did him. That's why he challenged him. Then he rolled up a this other face and lowered his shoulder. That boy, I was like, this man ain't even scared of our defense. And when you see that, dude, we be in trouble. That's when your, your whole defense of last to the league, they ain't what they are. That's why people were running the ball. That's why New England did it against us. That's why the Cowboys did it against us. I was like, this was like, see, not what we used to be with Kirk and them, baby. We ain't getting them. Y'all getting athletes instead of intense, intense, hard nose, put your face in that defensive linebacker. It's hard. You got to get them. It's getting the heart of your defense. All right, brother. Let the other guys get in. I just want to holler at you. Oh, man. Well, we definitely appreciate you, man. Appreciate the call. I'm actually going to throw a round of applause for that one. I'm not sure if you're still listening. Uh, via the phone if you are the round of applause is playing in stream for you that was a great call man i just want to comment on a couple of things he said he's right for the most part he's he's right i mean we need y'all hear me say it all the time we who is the dog on the team and i think it might end up being devin bush vince williams is a dog but vince williams is not Vinny is not the most talented guy, right? You need that dog that is unstoppable. You know, you need that guy. And I think Devin Bush might be that. Because Devin Bush, he, he come in with a vengeance. When he coming at you, he coming to knock your head off. Just watch the film. I mean, and 
And it, it was games that I've watched, and, and the, the lead is, you know, way up. They up by 40, 50, and he's still going 100 miles per hour to stop dudes for a two-yard game, which should have been a 10 to 12-yard game. And when he get there, he's coming all the way through. That's what I'm talking about. But he's right. Let's talk Let's talk about Bud Dupree. Bud do look like he tried to finesse his way. He looked like he tried to finesse his way. You know, if, if you look at the two play, T.J. Watt more of a dog on the field than Bud all day. You see the effort from Watt. <laughs> Watt getting after it. He don't, you know, he got that motor. He he got that gene in him. You know, he, he like big brother. Bud don't have it. Bud does seem like he tries to finesse his way all the time. Use that body and that power. There's no reason why Bud Dupree can't use speed to power with the intangibles that he has. But my man is absolutely right, man. You know, guys like Ferrier might not have been the greatest athlete, but when he there, he there. Larry Foote played great for us. You know, and then, then he even threw Kirkland in there. I mean, them big boys, yeah. Come on, man. Come on, man. We need dudes who want to hit something. <laughs> and they're not going to get pushed around. We need guys like that. And he's right, you know, and, and shout outs to Tony because I know Tony is listening. Tony said that all the time, man. That's the difference that he said it might not necessarily fall on the head coach, but you see the difference between Cower and Tomlin. You know, the just the errors as far as the players. He's right. Cower, you know, you had them dudes sitting in the cut, waiting to play. Your Brett Kiesels, are, excuse me, your Brett Kiesels of the world, and the dudes like that that was ready to go. You know, always have somebody in the background. You know, like a Larry Foot that can step right in there and do what they got to do. You know, and and we be shaky right now on on our guy. Look, look at what happened to us, man. When Ryan Shazier went down, we ain't have an answer in the world. We brought in Sean Spence off the street because we weren't confident with the guys already on the roster. That's what I'm talking about. That's got to get better. Moving on to the next call, man. Area code 609. You are live. What you got for us tonight? What's going on, Phil? Football Critic? What's up, man? Not much, not much. Um, I got a question. Um, who do you think balled out? I ain't going to say balled out. Who do you think is like, you know, Sean Palmer, other than, you know, Devin Bush? Who do you think is like Sean Palmer so far in the uh, rookie minicamp? Hmm, that's a tough one, man, because they didn't give us a lot of information this year, it seems like. We didn't really get a whole lot of video and info. Um, I would say, and not from any visual evidence, but just listening to how he talks, I'm kind of interested, man, in Justin Lane, man, because Justin Lane is talking like, a lot of swag, a lot of confidence. Like, he's basically saying, look, man, as playing a receiver before, I pretty much know what they're about to do. I think like them as a DB. And I feel like if he could put that on the field, <laughs> especially in the league, then he might be one of the most impressive guys. <laughs> you know, so right now, just, again, just reading, you know, what these guys are saying in their interviews and listening to them and just kind of seeing how they're, they're handling the thing, you know, the situation so far. I know it's early, but I would have to say right now I'm interested in seeing what Justin Lane is going to do because I, li I like how he's talking. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Uh, so after this, like, after concluding this year's draft, do you think the Steelers, you know, how aggressive we've been, you know, we haven't been aggressive in, like, you know, many years or so. Do you think this is, like, starting to become, it's going to be a trend, you know, in the next previous, next uh, upcoming draft? Like, we can trade up. We see, like, you know, best player available. Instead of, you know, in the past, we wait for them to uh, fall to us. We just, you know, trade up if we have the assets and stuff and the picks and stuff. Do you think we, sh we, can start, we should start doing that now instead of just, you know, relying on the past? I think it's possible, man, and the reason why I feel that way is, I don't know if I said it here on the show, but I know I told Tony offline, when we signed Joe Hayden, that showed me something. I said, uh-oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's not usually what the Steelers do. Even though he was cut, 
That's still usually not what the steel is doing. They acted on that really fast. And seeing how they acted on Dante Hightower. They actually went after him. And I'm like, okay, that's a marquee guy. And looking at what they just did with Steven Nelson. They don't usually do that. They don't spend that kind of money. And again, yep. they, they identified Devin Bush and was like, that's our guy. And he went up, well, they went up way further than any of us imagined. Even on the show that night, we all shooting down the, the rumor, man, they're not trading up to no top 10, no way. And they did it. So I think it's possible. I mean, the Steelers organization, I feel like, is never going to go too far out of the box. But I think when they have room in the box to wiggle a little bit, I think they'll do it now because they've shown us evidence that. I think they're getting a little more hungry for that, for that, that seventh title, man. It's been a little too long. So... I hope so, man. If the guy's out there, go get him, man. What, what are we waiting for? All right. Um, this is, uh, you know, method. Uh, what do you think of the, the later picks? Uh, Son Smith, Isaiah Boggs, Derrick Gray, and you must Gilbert. Because I, I think you must have Gilbert. He might have, like, he might get a spot on the team because, like, you know, we're lacking that speed athleticism and stuff. But, no, all the other players can get a chance, too, as well. So, what you think of them? Yeah, man, I definitely, my thoughts on those guys, and I, I appreciate your call, man. See, we got three more in the queue. I got to get to them real quick, but I want to answer your, your question. I like the chance that they're taking at these guys. Looks like, to me, that they're going after production and speed. You know, speed, of course, with Gilbert, and Gilbert also, I think, a lot of what's helping his cause and him being a late-round pick didn't hurt but the fact that he does a lot in pass coverage i think that's very attractive to them but as far as production sudden smith with all those sacks i don't know i know the conference he was in but still you know we got some of our best players from out of there <laughs> you know ab came from out of there big ben came from out of there i mean uh james harrison yeah kent state i believe is in that conference as well if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong but I just feel like they have a chance. I like them. Um, I don't know if you if you heard this show when I gave my, my, my true thoughts on them. Me and Kenyon did a draft recap, uh, so I won't bore you guys with that. Um, you know, If you get a chance, go check that out. And we went into a little more detail. But two quick things I'll say about uh, one on Sutton Smith and one on Gilbert as far as feedback. Sutton Smith's size is going to be a hindrance. You know, he's really going to have to get a lot stronger. If he has any chance of being effective like James Harrison was being undersized, I know that's a huge, ginormous expectation on him. But he's going to have to be that because his size is going to be a hindrance and guys can get on him and he's basically stonewalled. But I like his effort. I like his quickness. And I just like the fact that he seems like a football player. Anytime you get a guy, <coughs> excuse me, that was once a, a running back and is able to switch sides of the ball and be that productive that's a football player you know think about Hans Ward playing quarterback in college at at some point and turned out <laughs> to be one of our greatest receivers at least you know just what he offered to the team blocking and all of that you see what I'm saying those are the type of dudes that I love but those guys are football players that you just plug them in and do that and they do that so he has a chance Gilbert my critique on him is I need to see him you know, bring the mail, man, when he when he goes to tackle. I still see sometimes, I've been watching his film over and over and over, sometimes it seems like he waits for the contact. I don't see him drive through it. You know, and, and you look at his tape and just, just tackling. Look at his tape and then cut on De Devin Bush's tape. You will see exactly what I'm talking about. But, you know, I like the picks. They're later rounds. We'll see what happens. And thanks for the call, man. We got three more in the queue. Let's get through them. Area code 803. You are live. What you got for us tonight? Hey, good evening. This is Big Jason. What's um, going on, man? Oh, man, everything's going great. I, the concerns that I see, you know, I'm, I'm on the narrative where everybody else is talking about with the concerns of everything is, you know, under Carl, we had tremendous defensive depth. Yeah. Uh, we had Jerry, Os Jerry Osowski was a backup. You had Hope at back behind Casey Hampton, who could have been a mm, uh, yeah. he could have been a could have been a, a Pro Bowler on any other team. 
Uh, what was the uh, linebacker that went to the Patriots? I think he's the head coach of the Tennessee Titans now. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, what's his name? Vrabel. Mike Vrabel? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Mike Vrabel. He was a Pittsburgh Steel. Sure was. So, you know, it seems like along with the defensive players that we do have of quality, we we don't have the quality. We need the quality backups like we used to have when the Cowboys. And uh, which leads me to my next uh, thing would be, uh, does it seem to you that our players aren't developing as fast as the Tomlin? It seems like once these guys get to year three, these guys aren't making it. Um, they're not making the next, you know. I don't see a great improvement with a guy like Eli Rogers. I haven't seen any great improvement from him from year one to now. He's, a, he's, he's, he's experienced. But I haven't seen that next step. You that's, know, that's a good question, like, man. You know, that's always like a Bud Dupree, for example. You know, we talked about him. Mm -hmm. You know, with all that speed, what Coach we used to call back in the day, you running around the block. You're not penetrating <laughs> through the guy. He doesn't have very quick hands. Right. Uh, you know that 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 that's my thing. You know, kind of Bud Dupree. Will he? I was wondering whether he's going to step up and be that Jason Worlds. You know that Jason Worlds before he decided to retire? Oh, yeah, that man. Last year was pretty good. He had promise, man. He did. Yeah, Jason Worlds had promise before he all of a sudden they said, well, I quit. And those are the things that I just was covering tonight. Uh, a guy like Artie Burns, like he he's like Eli Rogers. You know, I don't know. He had not made any improvement from year one. Audie Burns' first or second year was most promising. In the last two years, or last year, just he just fell from he just fell out of the bottom. He just didn't do anything. And thank you. Yeah, man, definitely. Thank you for calling, man. I, I reflect on that really quick, and then I, I grab four one two. Looks like we got one of our Pittsburgh guys in here, and I think that's Kenyon sitting down there at the bottom. So I'll get him in after four one two. Um. That's always an interesting argument, man. Um, you know, me and Tony talk about that all the time. And if we get to the point where we, we say, is it the players or the coaches or a combination of both or luck or what is it? Because it's easy for us to identify the guys who did work under Coward and we forget about the guys who didn't. And then it's easier now because it's more recent for us to identify guys that didn't work <laughs> under Tomlin and kind of forget about the guys who did, you know, like obviously, you know, you look at Audie Burns and you look at Jarvis uh, Jones and, you know, you look at what's happening with Bud, but then on the flip side is other people since the Tomlin era, you know, that, you know, my man talked about it earlier tonight, Timmons, you know, part of his first draft pick. Boom. <laughs> you know, look what he turned out to be. I mean, you got guys like Cam Haywood. You got guys like Stephon Tua, which Tua has kind of regressed a little bit, but he had he was going up, you know, the year before last. You know, you it's guys out there, man, if we look at our team. TJ, what I mean, it's hard to say, but but I, I understand the sentiment and it's a good discussion to have. But then, you know, to be honest, I can't pinpoint it. I don't know. I don't know the reason why. I don't know if it's, is it the coaching regime or, I don't know, to be honest with you, man. And, you know, Tomlin being a defensive guy, too, we got to point the finger at him a little bit. But, you know, for every time I point the finger at him, I see other times where he's grilling these guys. You know, like, if you watch, you know, some of the, the, the sound effects footages and, you know, some of the other footage that they show that's not what we see always on the sideline. You know, a lot of times Tomlin is getting on guys. You know, it, it one game, it, it escapes me what game it was, but I think it was the season before last. And you see Tomlin literally going crazy saying, it's on the film. That was on the film. You know, basically saying, bruh, how you not see that? You see what I'm saying? So it's it's hard it's hard for me to beat up on coaches all the time because I know, you know, some of that falls on the player, but you have to acknowledge it. You definitely have to acknowledge certain things. You know, like why is it the defense and the secondary just can't seem to get it together or haven't been able to get it together the way they should have? And why do we struggle with subpar teams? You know, it 
those things are tangible. But again, I still don't necessarily believe it's the coach, you know, because, you know, Kawa has some struggles with that as well. It's just, I, I just never believe, I know this wasn't your question, but I'll, I'll make this statement before I grab two, uh, 412. I just never believe the sentiment of coach didn't have him ready to play. I never believe that with, with no coach. I mean, there's no way you're telling me, well, I ain't going to say all coaches, but there's no way you're going to tell me our staff doesn't prepare the team <laughs> as they should all the time. That, that's just hard for me to grasp that concept, but I don't know. But yeah, man, appreciate the call. Let's grab 412, and then we're going to get uh, one of you guys' favorite guests on the line. We'll get Kenyon up on here. 412, one of my Pittsburgh guys. What you got for us tonight? Hey, uh, Sam, how you doing? This is Pat. What's up, Pat? Good, man. How you doing? Good, man. Um, I just had one question. Um, um, what do you think about the – what do you think about – um, when OTAs and mini camps get here, um, which position group would you be keeping your eye on? And actually, I'm gonna yield my time because actually, my dad, who um, he's been um, watching me watch your channel and watch your um, Terrible Tal Tuesday, so I'm actually throw it to him because he actually has a question. So let me give you a second, man. Oh yeah, man, I appreciate that. How you doing? How Good. you doing, Sim? Good. How you doing, sir? I'm I'm all right. I'm senior. Um, I had only one question to ask, and with everything going on with the defense, um, one thing that I haven't heard anyone talk about is that with Ben signing his extension for three additional years after this year, when do you think is the proper time for the Steelers to start talking about his successor? Mm. And do you believe that his successor is already on the team or it is something that we should start talking about maybe in um, maybe two to three years? Oh, man, that's that's a wonderful question because, you know, a lot of times, especially us fans, we get so drawn and stuck on the now. You have to think about the future. I, I'm going to be honest with you, man. It, it scares me a little bit. I don't know. Mason Rudolph could be. I, I don't know. We haven't seen him. You know, I'm not going to judge him off of last preseason. We got to give him a little time. But I, I really don't know. And then if we look at look around college, you know, I, I'll admit, I don't know all of the quarterbacks. But if we're talking the next two to three years, I don't know who the guy is, to be honest. But I think we definitely should start looking, I would say, as early as next year's draft. Because Ben, even though they signed the extension, all it takes is one little injury. He feels like, look, man, I've done enough. It's not worth it. He retires early. Or all it takes is a real injury, and he has to retire. Or, you know, all it takes is for him to just decide, you know what, I'm only going to play two years. So I think, That's right. yeah, I think we need to look into that right now. And Josh Dobbs, no. That's not the the heir to the throne. Uh, Mason Rudolph, I think he has an opportunity to prove to us that he's capable to at least take it over in the meantime. If we have to find another quarterback, but I think it's yet to be determined. We we got we got to keep an eye on him. This preseason, I think, will be important for him as well in year two. If he if he can't beat out Dobbs, yes, then he's not the answer. And one other question, Sim, um, another position that I had interest in is something that we used to dominate in the past was um, the nose tackle position. Mm. For years, Casey Hampton um, used to help to fortify the rush defense to rushing the quarterback and also stopping the run. And I just don't believe that we have um, sufficient um, push up front like we used to have when we had Hampton and Kiesel and and players of their quality. Um, is that person on the team or we have to look to the future for that position as well? I think we have to look for the future. As much as I like Hargrave, the biggest problem is who's behind him. That That's a concern, especially with if we pay attention to how they try to do some tricky things with Hargrave for the pass rush, you know, like I know last year a couple times they threw him in there in sub-package. 
we're going to need another legit answer at regular nose tackle. You know, when we want to run base or we know they're going to run the football, I would have loved McCullers to have been that guy. With his size, he just never mm-hmm. panned out. But, yeah, I see that, again, that, and you, you're asking all the right questions. These are things we have to look down the road. You know, a lot of people forget about the nose tackle, but, you know, like you said, Big Hamp, man, what he did for the 3-4, taking on double teams, just made us unstoppable in the run game. And clearly that hasn't been us the last few years because running the football on us, it springs way more leaks than I prefer it to. So we definitely got to address that well, position. Well, thank you, Sam. I appreciate you giving me the time. Uh, blessings to you and yours, and you have a great rest of your day. Oh, man, I definitely thank you, man. Um, I really appreciate you calling, sir. Uh, th- that's wonderful. That that right there made my night. You know, Patrick has been watching us for a while, and then, you know, he, he tells his dad about this guy. <laughs> Named Sim that does these, you know, talk still is in here. His dad was interested enough. I was able to interest him enough for him to call. And you guys notice, for you young guys, y'all notice when, as soon as he got on, you you notice I said, sir, you know, respect your elders. Now, I, immediately, I wasn't going to just say Patrick to him. No, he's sir. <laughs> yeah, that's Patrick Sr. So, respects and blessings to you man i appreciate you dropping that wisdom on us tonight see that see that he's older than us guys he, he's thinking ahead he's not speeding through the now that's wisdom right there really appreciated that call and, and you're welcome anytime to call and of course we'll have you on kenyon man i believe we got kenyon here and we got another caller behind kenyon but i'm gonna bring kenyon in and, and you know if kenyon wants to he can rock for the rest of the night. You know, we're only going to be on no more than about 30 minutes, probably not that long. But let's get him on in here, man. Kenyon, what's going on, man? My man, Sam. My Aries brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> what's up? Nothing man. much, man. <laughs> just just enjoying. Oh, let me say this real quick to the people because they probably going to get on me. So for you guys that don't know, and this ain't really still a talk, but really, really, really quick. I'm probably the 1% who had never watched Game of Thrones. <laughs> so Kenyon and Tony was like, bro, you got to watch it. So long story short, I am now on season two up to episode, where am I on, five? Yeah, I've, I've watched all the way up to season two, episode five. And I bring that up because... Almost every other night, I'm texting Tony and Kenyon saying, oh, oh, this happened. Oh, that happened. And and they've been holding me down, man. So it's just funny to speak to them on the phone after I've been texting them all week. Man, what happened with this? Why this dude get killed? Oh, they cut his head off, huh? You know. But don't worry, guys. I'm going to watch the whole thing, seeing that it's now the last season. So my plan is to get caught up in the next couple of weeks. And, and there you go. But what you got for us, man? <laughs> uh, no, no, you know, um, I heard someone, one of my comment on Elmer and all this other stuff. You know, like, you know, I've talked about Elmer before. I don't have, like, a lot to say. So it's like, it, it's almost like, I think I made a comment earlier that it's almost like you're still hoping for, for players to develop in their fifth year. And if, play, yeah. if players develop in their fifth year, it's almost like it's it's like at that point, like you know who they are. After three, you kind of you you have a, a general outline of what the player is, and um, as far you know, Elmer is a person who he's never really learned counter moves. You know, what I mean, like I said before, he's a great specimen, but he's just not a great football player. That's that's basically what it is. He's a great specimen, but he's just not a great football player. Um, it's it's just common sense. Like if T.J. Watt could come in in the second year, already have multiple moves, get to the quarterback better. Um, that's a, that's a telltale sign. And, you know, um, uh, Elmer is, a, you know, he's six four, two sixty, 260. He, and he's a speed rusher. He has no counter moves at all. Um, I, I, I mean, I, at that size, I would think he would be a power guy. Like, you know what I mean? Like a guy that could power through people, but you rarely see that. Yeah, um, man. He's good against, um, He's good against the run. Like if you put him in a run situation, and he's and you have him in, you know in the base three four, he's really good at that. He can he can um, hold the line. And he can make plays. 
I give him that. I, I, I think that's a good part of his game. But that's it. You don't want him dropping in coverage, and he doesn't do too much. Um, he's not that. He's not versatile. So when people say move him here and move him there, I'm like, no, you can't move him. He's, he he is what he is. He's an outside linebacker. Uh, he's a pass rushing linebacker. T.J. Watt is the more versatile player of the two. Um, Absolutely. That's why. That's why to me, this defense. Like you know what this defense is gonna be now. Like like get them getting Devin Bush and drafting Ulysses uh Ulysses and drafting Sutton Smith, I know what this defense is gonna be now. So it's 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 a speed defense that's gonna be primarily in a um we're gonna be in the dime most of the time. Somebody said four three earlier, I'm like, we're not going to a four three. Um, um everything now is, is is sub package. And they've already said they wanted to play dime. They want they've been wanting to play the dime dollar defense for the last two years. <laughs> yeah. they, could, they can't do it. They couldn't do it. They've been saying they it. Do it. Yep. They've been saying it. So to me that's that's everything. That like so I already know like so I mean the players that people are hoping that are gonna get better. Like in my mind I'm already past like Elmer and Artie. Like they're already done. Like when people start talking to me about Artie Burns, I'm like, his best year was his rookie year. What I just want to know the game where he played well that you thought he was good, he had arrived. I want to know the game. Tell me the game where he played well. I just yeah. want one. Yeah, he he started to play, and like you said, there's no game that jumps out. And and this won't even last year. It was the year before last. Remember near the end of the season, he had a couple little moments, and the, you know, and I was like, okay. But it still was nothing. There was no signature game that I could say, okay, Artie. And we're talking within the last two years. And that's right. that's just not good. And it's this the biggest problem he has, he will repeatedly do it. Peeking in the backfield right. and just <laughs> letting guys blow right past him. I'm like, dude, what is going on? I mean, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's bad. Once, once is a mistake. Once is a mistake, but once it becomes multiple times. And you remember that time? You remember that game? That was the, yeah. Me and you were talking in that game where he just got beat twice in a row, and then he got the two penalties. And I was like, "What are you doing?" Mm. So it's like it just at that moment you know it's like it's like you know I don't I try not to get angry, but it's like I was like Artie. I mean, at that moment you know. I, but I told you when he first got drafted, I wasn't high on Artie Burns, and I always said that was a pick. It was a panic pick. It was a pick because he was the last cornerback and all the corners were gone, and he was the last one that was projected. He wasn't even projected in the first round. He was projected in the second or third, and they picked him in. The, they picked him late first or whatever. They picked him in the first, and I always said, you know, he just wasn't good on film. When I watched him, I never. He never showed me anything that made me say, oh, he's going to be our starting cornerback for the next five to ten years. Mm-mm. You know, what I mean, he, he he never he never showed me that. Um, you know, and I always say, the indictment on Artie Burns is them them trading for, uh, them trading for um, um, who's our cornerback? Uh, uh, Joe Hayden. Them trading for uh, Joe Hayden. That was the indictment on Artie Burns right there. That was that's when you knew, okay, Artie can't. He's not our future. So, at that mi- moment, I know it. Justin Lane. If I was Artie, I'd be worried because Justin Lane looks like he actually can play. You know what I mean? And he's long. Those long arms, those thirty-three inch arms. He, he, he can, you know, he got, he can move well. I watched the Michigan State Michigan game, and he was balling. He's, he's combative. Man. He's and, a combative and, dude, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you want. And our boy uh, Winnebago. You yeah. know, cause oh man, don't don't talk about Winno. <laughs> hey man, come on man. Ah. <laughs> you know that was our personal. That was our personal. Uh... Yeah. That that's gonna be one of those picks, man. One of them decisions that all of us quietly gonna be watching to see how his career goes and if he does anything great for New England, we all gonna be like, yo, he was right there. But if Deontay Johnson pans out and yeah, I I, I apologize to you guys, man, because last I just didn't have the time last week. I keep saying, oh, I might do a special. I'm going to be honest with you. Time has been a little crazy, and the news is slow. So if I get a chance, I want to do a little more deep dive profile on those dudes. But if he turns out to be what I think he could be, then we won't be saying that. 
we'll probably say, well, I, we probably needed a corner more so than Winovich. So if Lane plays decent, but if Dar- Deontay Johnson, man, if guys, I don't know what he's going to be, but when you watch this dude play, he is very eerily similar to the play style of Antonio Brown. And clearly that's yeah. why the Steelers drafted him because they see, oh, okay, oh. Because if you listen to uh, my man Drake, you know, not the rapper, <laughs> Daryl Drake, <laughs> When he said that Tomlin basically came to him and said, yo, I want you to take a look at this guy. Go go check him out. And they was blown away at his ability. If that pans out, I don't think we're going to be talking about we should have got Winovich. Because then, then you're going to be saying, should we have taken him over Deontay Johnson? So I know it's a, it's a performance-driven you know, opinion. Based on how these dudes perform, it's, it's, that's when we're going to say it's a bad pick. Or a good pick, but yeah, I want I wanted Wino. I ain't gonna lie, I did want him. I thought we definitely was gonna get him at that spot. But speaking of that, Kenya man, real quick, why I got you? Because I was gonna talk about this anyway. Clearly, they're not they're not comfortable with receiver right now. What you think about them signing that dude Johnny Harden out of the from no from the Raiders? Well, I guess they the Eagles let him go, but because he got a little speed. So what you think they're trying to do there? Uh, I mean, it's always more bodies in camp. He's depth. He's a speed guy. Uh, he's probably a, a, a kick returner or something like that. You know, he might do kick returning ability, and you can, you know, put him in camp. It's always good to have more people in camp. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I said, like I said, when they were drafting, uh, I thought they were going to double dip at receivers. So them not doing it, to me, said, okay, they they, they like what they have, but it, it's never too bad to add other guys in there in the um, receiver room we, we, with the people we have now. I'm thinking, mm, yeah, I mean, it's good to have a DHB not coming back. So with Eli there, we don't have big receivers. Like if you think about it, I mean, Juju's big, but he's not big. He's not like 6'4", six, 6'5". Four, six, you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, we don't have any big receivers. I guess our big receiver is going to be the tight ends because we don't have any big receivers. Um I think that if you look at what they're doing on offense and defense with the people they're drafting in certain positions, it's really about speed, except for like Benny Snell, who's kind of like a traditional Pittsburgh Steelers bang back that you would bring in, you know what I mean, a traditional guy. Um, uh, but other than that, if you look at the other positions, it's all about speed. And if if he sticks, he sticks. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Um, he's, to me, he's a camp body. He's like Keon Adams was. He's a camp guy. <laughs> Keon Adams got cut. Yeah, there you so, go. You know, there you go. So it's it's kind of simple for me when I watch when I and check him out. It's not like a a big thing. I think it's if you look at uh, I mean, uh, to further your point on Deontay Johnson, I guess that's the, that's going to be the the discussion two years from now or three years from now. Was was that a good pick? And did you did you pass up Winnow? Because I'm gonna be honest with you, I think Winnow makes impact fairly quickly. Yeah, he will. With yeah, he will. He's going to be nasty for them, man. You know what I mean? He fits. So, when you know, to me, it's just kind of like, it just depends on how you look at it. I mean, I understand what they did. I understand, you know, I was hyped when I heard Daryl Drake talking about Deontay Johnson. I was I was hyped, too. Went back and watched film. Remember, te- we, we were texting each other back and forth. Yeah, I watched this game. I watched this game. Um, he, He's... I like the way he plays. It's just, to me, I don't know. I, I just don't know if I would have. I like him, and I guess I have to. I got to rock with it, but I don't know, man. Because, man, we're sitting there watching the yeah. game, and I'm sitting there going, they could have took, took Winno. Because that would have been Lane and Winno. Think about that. That would have been Lane and Winno. Hmm. And that would have been your. And you still could have got. You still probably could have gotten. When did, um, when did, um, the kid from Notre Dame go to the Ravens. He go in the third. I think it was l- either late third or fourth. Late, late third. Come on, we could have got him. Yeah, we could have rolled. But I understand what they're doing. I, I get it. They 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 want to be most on offense. And he, I will say this: he is. If you watch him on tape, he is dynamic. 
You know, I mean, he's very dynamic. So, you know, does he have the work ethic of uh, Antonio Brown? If he yeah. has the work ethic, he'd be all right. That's the that's, thing. That's, to me, that's what made Antonio Brown good. It wasn't the, you know, because Antonio Brown's not overly fast. He's quick. He's not fast. He, he But but his work ethic was better than, if Deontay Johnson has that work, has that same work ethic, then we got a steal. Not even a steal. It's a justified pick. That's the best way I can put it. It's a justified pick. So. Yeah, that's the thing. You know. It's, when I looked at it, and I, I'm glad I mentioned it because I was going to talk about it tonight and have forgot. When I watch, when I keep watching his film, when I'm trying to decide why did they pick him right there, because I agree with Kenyon. Right. To me, they must, they're clearly picking him off of the potential of what he can do. Yeah. Like, I guess they looking at it and they're saying, whoa, that's, he could fit exactly what we run right now. And we think he, he has the talent to do it. Other than that, it don't make sense. Because, like you said, there was bigger receivers they could have taken. They could have waited and still got a decent receiver later. So I think we should keep our eyes on this dude, man, because I think that they really feel like he can be what Antonio Brown was for the Steelers' offense. Maybe not as productive as A.B., and I'm not even putting that comparison on him, but I'm telling you, if you've never watched him play, He's going to remind you of that type of style. He runs a lot of the same routes. The drags, I mean, the little flares. Mm -hmm. Even the, the, the he'll run a skinny post on you. He'll run a little inside go. He looks like Antonio Brown on the field, man. It's crazy. His change of direction yeah. is nuts. But I, that's what I'm thinking is they looked at him and was like, he's super talented. He can fill the void. Let's go ahead and get him. But... Mm -hmm. To us fans, they got to prove it. He's got to prove it, that he could do it in the NFL. But we'll see. Um, Let me um, see, man. Yeah, well, yeah go ahead. If you want to get, you get, you get your call in, you get, I mean, I'll, I'll rock with you. I can rock with you to the end. I'm, I'm chilling. Oh, no. Hey, no, the, the, the caller dropped off, man. So we can, we can go ahead oh, and okay. grab these um, other two well, things. Was, yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah, what I was going to tell you is, look at it this way. Deontay Johnson and Eli Rogers are almost the same size, correct? Yeah, pretty much. Who? Okay. Eli Rogers was was kind of panned as like a smaller, like a slower Antonio Brown, mm -hmm. but he didn't have he wasn't as, as athletic, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, that will, I'll, I'll be an accurate assessment of him, right? Yeah. I'm... Deontay Johnson is De Deontay is more Antonio Brown, I would say, and he's probably like. They're they're so similar. I would say they're just very similar. They're like they're very, and I understand what Pittsburgh was doing. Pittsburgh was probably thinking, "You're right. You can just come in and we could plug him in." To me, the person who has to worry about their job is Eli Rogers. Eli Rogers. I was gonna say that. And you know what, Kenyon? I think even that it might not seem that way, but I think even signing a dude like Johnny Halton also could spell trouble for Eli because yeah, it looks like. The Steelers are probably pretty cool at that that little slotty type spot. I mean, you got Johnson, who you just draft, who can also play X. But they said, oh, we're going to work him inside and out. Eli and Ryan Switzer. And I think Ben, I think the chemistry that he kind of developed with Switzer last year is going to keep him around. So Eli right. could be the odd man out. Because if even if these free agents that they're signing are more big, speedy guys, then that's telling you right there where's the where we gonna trim the fat at as far as the receivers probably gonna be that mm. semi slot position. So yeah, Eli could be in trouble, man. Yeah, you're right. I think yeah, I think you're right. The, the Ben that that chemistry he developed last year is only gonna help help the, help him be on the field more. Um, and I think Deontay Johnson since he's a draft pick. They can bring him. Along. They can actually bring him along slowly, and then you know, and not have him in certain sets in the beginning, and just let him kind of grow. And I kind of like that. Uh, yeah, I think Eli's in trouble. I mean, I just think he's in trouble because if Deontay becomes Deontay, if, if he becomes what I think he he can become, you know what I mean? So 
And, you know, Dante Moncrief can be the, the true X and let him play that mm-hmm. for the upcoming year. And, and you, you, you know, you have Juju in a slot and, and having Juju as the main receiver and moving him around a lot. And, they, and I think they want to move Deontay Johnson around a lot because I would like to see, I would like to see the third corner try to, co- try to cover him. Yeah, man. So I hope he pans out, man. I, I just hope. And again, I'm not going to put the pressure on him that many of the fan base put on James Washington. I'm going to let him develop. But right. just looking at his game, because I went and watched a couple more games the other night. It's so many things that he do that the Steelers have done with A.B. Even like the little, you know, he's the guy that they put in motion to the other side and yeah. all of that. St- I mean, I saw so many patterns. I said, wow, that looked like A.B. We run those same routes. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, even the screens. Yeah. The ones that we, we all hated. Yeah. <laughs> and because Todd yeah. Haley would run them to death and they wouldn't work. But even those, mm-hmm. just like A.B. So... I mean, Ty Haley was great. Ty Haley was great that screen game, and um, but then I like how I like how Feetner does his screens though. Yeah, it kind of gives you like a little bit more room, and if you put Deontay in those type of situations, hey, because if you watch him on tape one on one, you don't see dudes one on one like squaring him up, and you know he can, he can make him he can make you look silly on film. If you, yeah, go watch it. Watch his 2018 tape. Watch his 2017 tape. Because I went back. I watched some of his 2017 tape. And, yo, hey, man, if he, if he plays like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, look, they know what they're doing. They, they, you know, one thing Pittsburgh can't do is draft receivers, even though their miss rate is bigger than their hit rate, as I'm sure that's read to you. But it's oh, still, God. they yeah. can draft them. And, and, um, and Daryl Drake is a person he will develop you. And remember, Daryl Drake is a guy who drafted – What's the kid that went to Arizona that he turned into like a little stud, a little, little slot stud that was fast? You know what I'm talking about? What's his name? John. Uh, he put, played for the Ravens last year. Oh, he, Brown. Smokey Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hey, I'm with it. I'm with it. I mean, Daryl Drake likes those little – he likes those type of receivers. I think he's a great receivers coach. So, you know, if Deontay want, willing to work, you know what I'm saying, it, I'm, I'm with you on that. I think, you know, but it, like, I would tell – I would urge people – who want to know more about him to watch film? Just watch film on him. You know, me it's like Sim does, and I watch film. Just watch him. Yeah. Just watch him. You see the appreciation they have for him. He's nasty, man. It's you know, and, and we ran it down, man. When we would did, did the draft recap, he, he's really just got to get a little stronger. He's gonna have to do that. Yeah. Um, some of those, and I'm not even gonna say combative catches. Some of those tough or awkwardly thrown. Balls, he's got to be able to catch a little better because they hitting them in his hand, like the one where he has to turn yeah. around and the one he was wide yeah. open. I think against might have been against Buffalo, and it was high. But I mean, both hands hit it. You got to catch it. It was another one he dropped in the end zone. Is so he has a little bit of those things. But for every bad play, you'll see him make an amazing catch. How he adjusts his body. The little he even got the AB little push off. If y'all noticed that, he yeah. got the little slight. I'm telling you, this dude. When you look at him, I don't want y'all to say, "Oh man, can can he be AB?" Let's let's not do that to him. But when you watch him, you're gonna clearly see. Oh, I see why the Steelers got him. You're gonna know immediately why they drafted him yeah. because it looks like he can do exactly what we need him to do. So. But all right, man, we we only got about 14 minutes left in the phone queue, guys. So me and Kenyon will go ahead and knock out this last little topic here. Uh, I did want to make a comment um, real one, quick, one Kenyon. Quick, one quick comment. One quick comment for you, Sam. Yeah. The draft lottery just happened. And uh, let me just tell you this. The New Orleans Pelicans have the number one pick. Oh, Lord. They will, they will draft Zion Williamson. Bruh. The, and, Lo- and, the Los Angeles and, Lakers and, have the fourth pick. Oh the my Los Angeles goodness. Lakers have the fourth pick, and and the New York Knicks got the third pick. Who everybody thought was going to get the number one pick. The New Whoa. Orleans Pelicans got the number one pick. AD, he gonna stay there now. He's staying there now. Why leave? <laughs> oh wow. Why leave? That's a shakeup right there. Are you serious? Are you serious? 
Yikes. I know you're from basketball tangent, but come on, man. Are you serious? Yikes. AD and Zion? Could get ugly, folks, because I don't think nobody was was calling New Orleans. But um Nope. <laughs> and Night Wolf, don't don't say that. And, and we we're not gonna go off on a tangent, man, because we only got a few more minutes. But don't don't say this ass six and suck, man. It's listen, I, I told y'all what was gonna happen on my other show. I told you. They they're not consistent. Ben Simmons is a liability on offense. And th- that's just what you get. Brett Brown is not using those guys to the best of their ability. And Embiid, why is he playing so far away from the Brack so often? I mean, you can switch it up, but I need you to be in the paint. You are a nightmare down there. You get doubled more than anybody. Kick it out. You got shooters. Uh, I don't know. But, nah, let's not do that. Let's let's not do that. We ain't going to go down that road yet. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, and Sam was already already pissed off about Philly, and I told him what Philly problem was, and I told him mm. what their issue is, and it's it's, a, it's an obvious issue. So it's it's almost like you know you have to make a decision. Like the re- the reality of the situation is, Embiid and Ben Simmons may not be able to coexist. Nah, in trying to win a championship may not unless he develops unless Ben Simmons gets in the gym and develops a shot. Yeah. Because yep. to be what fair, you, what, I, what I tell you, what, what I tell you, yeah, I know. To be fair, I gave LeBron James the same criticism. For you guys that don't know, it was a time where LeBron couldn't shoot the mid range, and I used to be like, "Dog, if this boy, if he gets any type of a shot, it's over." And look what happened. LeBron might even pull a three on you from time to time. But if yeah. if Ben Simmons yeah. can get that just enough that you have to respect it. It's a whole different ball game. But I don't know. But all right, guys, we got 11 minutes left. Um, 912 did call back. So real quick, I'm going to ask Kenyon a question on the last topic that I had. And we'll be really fast with that. And 912 will bring you in and then that'll end the show. But we got to do this really quick because we literally have right now 11 minutes. Um, What you think, man? About the Kenyon Adams, oh, Kenyon, <laughs> Keon Adams <laughs> releasing, um, do you think that gives us a clear sign of Ola having the biggest opportunity right now, especially with Bud Dupree not necessarily being great and Chicolo not being great? Mm-hmm. Sounds like Ola, to me, has the biggest opportunity right now to make some noise. Yeah, I, I think they're... You know what this also says to me? That they like Sutton Smith. Yeah. Yeah. You understand know what I'm saying? Like they like him. Because if they if if when you make that cut early, you're basically telling you're clearing this the, the decks for okay, Sutton, okay, Sutton and Ola. We need to we need to see something. You know what I mean? And the and the thing with Hurst Ola is that he's not a special teams guy. So Whereas like Sutton Smith, he's more versatile. You know, remember they like they love versatility, and Sutton Smith, Sutton Smith is automatically gonna be a is gonna be a um a special teams guy. He's automatically on special teams. So releasing Keon Adams and bringing in Sutton Smith and having Ola there. Um, Ola is a traditional pass rusher, old school. Um, you know, he's not James Harrison. I get you. You would think he is wearing the same number, but he's not James Harrison. Um, but I'm interested to see what Ola does. Um, Chicolo is is a special teamer. Basically, uh, you can put him in the game. Sometimes he's played well in certain spots. Um, but Sutton Smith, I'm very eager to see what they do with him because I told you my issues with him, um, especially watching him at the Senior Bowl. But when yeah. you watch him on tape, yeah, you know, you watch him on tape, he's relentless. So it just clears the deck for them. I mean, it just clears the deck. I mean, I told you I got sleepers. I think, I think you listen. Look, I know you think you listen not gonna make the team, but I'm gonna keep telling you. He'll make. When you watch tape. They, when they put, when they watch tape and they line them up on receivers, <laughs> that, you know, you don't draft people like that, man, for, for no reason. That you know dude I mean? be out there. Like, I know I'm exaggerating, but he be out there like sixty <laughs> percent of the time. I'm watching the film, like, yo, this dude is out. I mean, out wide. Sixty percent of the time he in coverage. I'm like, bro, that's attractive, yo. man. Yo, yo, hey, hey, yeah. You know, I, and I think there was a question they asked you earlier about uh, somebody asked you about Baron playing safety. You can't play safety anymore. 
Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that was his hate. I mean, you think about it. He gets moved yeah. from safety. And I, I know it was kind of out of necessity where that happened in Tampa at that time and somebody got hurt. But yeah, eh, I, I don't see it. You know, I see them. Yeah. I see it being Allen or Sutton or even Hilton, one of those dudes. Mm-hmm. But who knows? Mm-hmm. Why, well, right, man, I just wanted to get your take on that. You can definitely hold on here. Um, You know, stay on the call. As we grab this next caller, and it's funny because that was the title of the video, and we just now getting the Ola with 10 minutes left. Well, not even 10 minutes. We are literally at seven and a half minutes now. So 912, we're bringing you in. If you want to say something to Kenyon, he's on the line. But 912, take us home, man. What you got for us tonight? Hey, Sam. Hey, man, y'all, y'all got to forgive me for my voice. Uh, I've been going through a lot of stuff. So, but, uh, no, I dropped off a while ago so we can have a treat to listen to my boy, Kenyon. Uh, I love listening to him. <laughs> uh, but uh, I was just going to say, have you ever have you ever seen the uh, bio uh, on uh, Cower? Uh, when he played football, man, he was a dog. Mm-mm. And uh, I, I reckon it's between him and the, uh, and the uh, guys that was, you know, doing the drafting and everything uh man they had the dogs and uh tower i don't i i think them guys respected him because of what he was and how he was and them guys knew they had to play because they had to back they had the guys on the bench they can come in and take over yeah so i i, I reckon that's why why them guys are so so strong on defense but I'll, I'll turn it back over to Kenyon. Man, I love listening to y'all talk. Y'all, y'all have a good evening. Oh, man, appreciate thank that. you. Yeah, we appreciate that, man. Um, It's always good to hear when people give you praise, man. And that, that's what we do it for. So we definitely appreciate that. Um, Yeah, I, I'll be very, real quick, man, because I want Kenyon to share his thoughts on it. But, yeah, to me, man, you just never know. Um, It's funny that it panned out that way. But then it's weird because you you have guys who play with both and they seem to respect both coaches. So you just never know. But if the evidence don't doesn't necessarily lie, if we do look at all of these role players that we had under Cowher that turned out being decent, and then we look at the situation that we've been in it at least the last couple years under Tomlin as far as backups, and it's like man. You know, we we devastated when somebody go down. It was like, oh, man, I go to season. But like I said, we don't think about the guys that didn't work for Cowan, and we don't always praise the guys that has worked under Tomlin. So, but but he's right. You know, I think Cowan probably might have had a little more person. Uh, his personality was a little different. He was a player's coach as well, but may, maybe a little more stern where Tomlin is respected maybe more as the player's coach and not as stern. Obviously, we see how much A.B. was able to get away with. So, two different approaches. But what you think, Kenyon? Uh, I just think it's, it's two different eras. I mean, Coward, Coward was the coach after Chuck Noll, so he basically oh, yeah. the same model. Yeah. And and th- that was a, that, he, he was basically Chuck No. He was Chuck No light. He wasn't as hard as Chuck No was. Nobody was as hard as Chuck No was. So, uh, uh, Cowell was kind of like stern. He had to kind of he was kind of in the old school tradition of the Steelers. Tomlin comes in. Um, he's kind of like he's a, he's a Tony Dungy disciple, actually. Yeah. So, and Tony Dungy did play for the Steelers, but Tony Dungy is laid back. He's more cerebral. He's more. Uh, I guess you could say analytical with the way he does things. And um, Tony Dungy never yells at you. So uh, Tomlin is kind of in, in, in between that. He's kind of hyped. And I always tell people, Cower, Cower was, a, was a linebacker when he played football. Mike Tomlin was a wide receiver. Mm. It's just a different, it's different mentalities. Yeah. It's different mentalities. It, it, it's kind of like, you know, um, Tomlin's style is not traditional Pittsburgh style. And he had to actually morph into – he had to adjust to the Pittsburgh style. So, and, you know, people have to realize that when Tomlin came and, and what you're seeing now, it's just a change. The NFL has changed. You can't run a 3-4 defense anymore. You can't be traditional. He, he did it as long as he could do it when he kept Dick LeBeau. 
if he wanted to really make a change and say I'm different, he could have fired Dick LeBeau when he came in, but he didn't. So um, if you see how we play now, it's more of a hybrid defense. It's, it's the way we are now. Um, I know people want him to be to yell and do all this other stuff, but the players are different now. Social media has cha- has flipped all sports. Yeah. Because you can get on your phone and say what you, you know what I mean? It's just different. You can't shut people up. The only pe- the only people that shut people up are the Patriots. Now, you know, and but that's the only team that does that. Every other team has issues with, with social media and phones and doing this and that. And that's in all sports, basketball, football, but whatever you want to talk about. So, you know, Tomlin is what I call a new generation coach. He's a, he's a millennial coach, if you want to call it. He's not a millennial, but he's a, he has a millennial mind when it comes to that. So um, he was just first. So that's how I look at it. It's, you know, I, I appreciate the coward, but people talk about coward like he, he won five Super Bowls. Uh, I've never understood that. Like he yeah. only won one, one with his players, because that's one. always that's always the knock. <laughs> Tomlin won with his players, and I'm like, well, listen, I love Coward too, but how many did we win with his player? I, I just, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh man, I don't understand it. I don't get it. But yeah, I agree with Kenya, man. Two different eras, you know. But it, it is hard though when you reflect back on it. You'd be like, man, you're right. But, you know, two different eras, and like I said, it might have been a little bit of luck with some of the guys, you you know, you took a shot on, and, and we've had guys, too, under Tomlin that, you know, turned out to be good yep. players. So, you know, I just think some of that yep. is just chance. A good amount of it is coaching, and then another good amount of it is the player himself and how he develops. So, there and you have it. One small point. One final point I'll make. Just think about it this way. How many Hall of Famers come from each coach? And that answers your question. Mm. Yeah. So if you wanna you wanna go there, if you wanna go there, in the Coward era, how many how many of those players on those Pittsburgh teams made the Hall of Fame? Kevin Green, correct? Demonte Dawson? Troy will make De- it. Demonte Dawson was drafted Demonte Dawson was drafted by No, correct? So Yeah, that's it. Yeah. How many Hall of Famers? Yeah. That's a good question. Tomlin has two. Tomlin has two right now. If he retires, he, he might have three. He has two. He has two automatically. Ben's going and AB's going, even though he's not on our team anymore. That's two right there. He had better. That's three. Well, he didn't have better. My bad. Uh, Kyle had better. So he had two. So interesting. It'll be an interesting debate. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good one there. That is a good one there. Well, man, it's funny. Every time I feel like we don't have nothing to talk about, we find something, man. So we appreciate all of you guys sticking around. And I know the title doesn't necessarily cover what we really talked about (laughs) tonight. But uh, bottom line, you know, I think Ola, like I have in the title, has a huge opportunity. And and we'll see. You know, we'll see. Because, again, He's going to be able to show himself in preseason. He might even outplay Chicolo. So, you know, maybe he moves up into the third spot. But like Kenya said, I think it, it might allow Sutton Smith to get an opportunity now because you would expect they'll keep, say, ran hypothetically, what, five outside backers, maybe five middle. So Sutton has a chance if he can show something on special teams, but... That's all we got for y'all tonight, man. So we appreciate everybody tuning in. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. As I see, we're only at 33 likes out of at one time. Seven, uh, it was 80 people watching. So do that. Cut on your notifications so you know when the video is live or when there's any pre-recorded production. And last but not least, if you feel the need or if you should feel uh, gracious, if you want to donate, the ways that you could do that down here in the chat, right, uh, actually left corner, left bottom corner, click on the dollar sign. If you prefer Cash App or PayPal, that information is in the description. Don't feel obligated. I'm just letting you know if you want to. Those are your opportunities. But outside of that, for myself and my good brother Kenyon, we're going to say peace to y'all tonight. God bless. Have a good night. And Kenyon, I'm sure I'll be texting you and Tony a little later as I watch some more of these episodes. (laughs) I'm pretty sure 
I'll be hitting y'all up in, in, in a little while here because I'm going to try to jump on episode six here in a few minutes. But <laughs> All right, man. We out of here. Appreciate it, Kenya. Peace, Adios. folks. All right. Peace.